Hey, Jennifer. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing good. Just, uh, I'm just getting into my studio, believe it or not. I've had the last two days off and I haven't even really painted. So take a deep breath and it'll get better. And I got my car, so all of that's out of the way now. And um, hopefully next week when I have my days off, I can really focus on doing some fun stuff like painting, you know? Actually, this is kind of fun. You might want to do this. See these little rocks? People, people um, do what is called stones for joy. And I'll have to show you these when I'm finished with them. But what basically you do is, you know, paint something fun. You can use your acrylic paints on them. Um, and then kind of place them in your neighborhood or, you know, along the street or whatever where people are walking. And the idea is that it's just supposed to, you know, bring a little joy to somebody's day instead of all this heaviness so you know you can paint paint little rocks i just covered this with uh gesso but you can do white acrylic paint or something just something simple like a word even anyway so that that's kind of what i wanted to do on my days off and i that's all the further i got was with the white paint but that's okay anyway so all that being said we talked about um this little landscape painting, and that's what I'm gonna go ahead and demo. And, you know, maybe you can work on it while we're not able to meet in person. And by the way, this in no way um, takes the place of our private lessons here when everything gets cleared up. I just want to give you something to work on. Um, so this is a project that is uh, painting a landscape using aerial perspective. And aerial perspective is, you know, how buildings have, you know, they have perspective to make them look three-dimensional. Aerial perspective um, uses color and value to give the illusion of space. So uh, a couple things to keep in mind with that. When colors are further away, they're cooler and lighter and when they're closer to you they're darker and warmer in color so those are a couple things to keep in mind about aerial perspective um so we're only going to be using two colors we're going to be using ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and i think you had those so um if you don't have the the ultramarine I'm pretty sure you had cobalt and I'm pretty sure you had burnt sienna too. But if you don't, we can substitute, you know, something else that's like an earthy color, like burnt sienna is that brownie, brown color. Um, we can substitute something else that, that might be closer to what um, we need. Anyway, so I'm going to flip the phone down and grab my brushes and just do a demo like you were standing right next to me. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to see it okay and we'll just hope that it works. Not something I've done before, so here we go. Don't get dizzy. There we go. There it is, all set up. I'll send you a... A picture of this the sketch so you can um, print it out or whatever you need to do to get it onto your watercolor paper so I have it taped down and if you remember last week what we did was we got the paper wet and then we put the paint what we called charge charging the paint into the that wetness Got a little bit of dust there so that's what I'm going to do with clear water. I'm just going to get that paper wet and I'm going to come down to this line here at the base of the mountains. And I'm looking at my little book too. It was in that same book that um, I used the vase project. So just remember to get a lot of water Make sure that paper is has that 
kind of that sheen so that the paint will kind of spread out. All right, so all the way down to that line, right? I'm kind of looking to make sure that it's still all wet. It's starting to dry out a little bit up here, so. And I'm using um, number 10. I think you have that size too. So use as big of a brush as you can on this because you want to get this paint down pretty fast. Okay, so it's all nice and moist. And you can see over here, I've got my cobalt blue and I've got my burnt sienna and they're not needing to be, um, they're gonna need to be like a thinner, more watery paint, like the tea pretty much. Maybe a little bit thicker because you've got water on the paper already. It's starting to kind of settle here, so I'm just going to tip it a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to start out just with the blue and just kind of drop it in. You don't need to have it in every little spot. It's the sky, you know, so there can be like clouds here and there. And I'm bringing it all the way down. All the way down. Going back in and grabbing some paint. And we're gonna come back over the, this with darker colors later, so. Okay, so it's still nice and wet. And I'm gonna grab not real whole lot of that burnt sienna. Just do you see how I'm using the the side of the brush on this? You know, more of that belly of the brush, and then just kind of paper towel in my other hand, dropping in some of that warmer color. This kind of gives the impression that the, the sky is kind of hazy. All right. Okay. So got that little layer down and now you're going to want to dry it. Kind of moving that hair dryer around so it dries evenly. I'm just going to turn that off so you don't have to sit here and listen to my hair dryer, okay? I'll be right back. Okay, it is all nice and dry. You can see it's pretty light. It's not a real saturated color. So the next step is to um, come in here with color. And we're going to start with the ultramarine and then graded wash into the um, burnt sienna. So it's going to be about a value three, like if you're looking at it on your little scale that you made, it's going to be about a value three. So I want to use a bigger brush because of the space and want to try to put that first stroke up here all in one swoop. So even though you don't have a bigger brush, I'm gonna go ahead and use a bigger brush to show you. And then I might suggest that rather than use this size of a paper, 
that you scale down a little bit to maybe like a five by seven. So the brushes that you have will be big enough and you won't be struggling to fill all that space. Okay, so I don't think I've showed you these brushes, but this is a really nice big brush. Um, probably about it, I don't know, it's about, a, about an inch this way. But it's, it's a squirrel hair brush and it holds a lot of paint and water. So I'm gonna get a little bit more paint mixed up with my ultramarine and then a little bit more of my burnt sienna and then just be really bold with that first stroke. And um, also, as you're doing this, you can tip your board up a little bit. I'm gonna do that, even though it's kind of maybe distorted for you. So, all right. Oops, I just got some burnt sienna in my ultramarine blue, but that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway. It's not gonna hurt anything. So I'm getting my brush all nice and loaded up with that ultramarine and the, pa the paper's dry. We didn't wet that part this time. So I've got about a coffee mixture going here and paint, water, and I'm just gonna follow that line right across. I'm gonna grab more paint though. Do as I say, not as I do. Right, come back over all the way across. Rinsing my brush out and then I'm coming in with my mixture of burnt sienna. And I'm, come, I'm tipping the paper up, so I've got my bead going here. I'm gonna come in at the bottom of that. Ugh. You can see I didn't mix up my paint quite enough, so I've got a blob of burnt sienna, but that's okay. It kind of spread out. More paint. More paint. More paint. And tip the board back down. And you can come in and just let the base of that soak up that paint. There's some paint and water that kind of gets under that tape, so I kind of push down. I don't think you have tape though, so. But when you have tape, this is what you do. You push down, it kind of squeezes that water back up around into the paper towel, so it'll <clears throat> not cause a problem by pushing the paint away and making those blossoms that we talk about. And I am going to turn the camera off and dry this and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that's dry and we're going to go to the little mountain range area. So you probably notice that because of the haze that's often in the air, like if you're looking out at Mount Hood and it looks kind of hazy, you don't really see a crystal clear. It's because of the moisture in the air. So um, we are going to start with um, doing a little bit of clear water just at the base of this one and then come in at the top with the color. So it gives the impression, the illusion, that there's a little bit of haziness at the base of that mountain. And I'm gonna trade waters there. So now I'm gonna go to a smaller brush, probably if I can find it. Where is it? Um, probably in eight or a six, a six probably will be enough. So, okay. So right at the base of the mountain, and here's the line of the forward mountain, I'm just gonna get it wet. With 
with clear water. Follow that line. And then just the, just the base. I'm leaving some of the paper dry up at the top and you'll see why. So up at the top, and this is gonna be a fairly light because that mountain is dis distant. I'm just gonna come in at the top of that water line and brush in some of that ultramarine and then clean my brush up a little bit. And again, kind of drop in, charge in some uh, burnt sienna to that. Okay, so that one's done. And dry it real quick. And then we're gonna do the same to the bigger mountain in front of it after this part's dry. And then I'm gonna go with a bigger brush on that one because the area to cover is bigger, so. I'll go with that number 10 round brush. And it's gonna be a little bit darker than that little mountain right behind because this one is closer. So we want the color to be darker and warmer. And that'll happen because of the, because of the um, consistency of the paint and the water. So going to my number 10 brush, this one I think you have. And then I'm gonna get a little bit more burnt sienna mixed up and ready to go. And just a little bit more ultramarine. Now one thing to be a little careful of is we get, we're gonna wanna leave this roof light, these little rooftops, um, we're gonna wanna leave those light. So we're gonna do the clear water down around it, but when you put the paint on, maybe don't come down quite too close to that um, roof line. You want it that you want that to stay pretty light. Oops, went up a little too high on that one. Okay, so just coming in with a real bold stroke, maybe a little bit darker on that. But remember, I'm going to be dropping in the burnt sienna on top of that, charging that in. See how that, when it hits the, the water, it just starts to get pulled into it. And I'm using the side of the brush, if you notice. I just grabbed a little bit more burnt sienna, or not burnt sienna, um, blue. And a little bit more burnt sienna to kind of mix in with that, charging that in.
All right. Actually, gonna pull that down a little bit more here, just so I don't have a weird line. All right, time to dry. Be back in a minute. Okay, here comes the tricky part. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid. It's all practice, right? This uh, time we're going to be coming in and doing the, the trees and the bushes. And I am gonna use this little flat brush. See, I think you have one. We talked about that last time. There, It's good for doing kind of that scrubby little um, brush stroke. I don't know if we actually really went over that or not, but hopefully you can see it as I'm doing it here. And this time we're gonna get the ultramarine blue and the burnt sienna and mix them together. Some of it's going to be a little bit more pure uh, burnt sienna and then some parts are going to have a little bit more of that ultramarine blue and that'll suggest deeper areas in the trees or sh shaded areas in the tree. So let's start on this end. I'm working on the side of the brush pretty much like this and I like this little flat brush because like now I have a straight line down here and I have straight lines that I need to work around on these um, barns. And this brush I can do a whole lot of different things with, like I can come in close with that flat edge of the top of it. So here we go. One thing to try to do to make it look more realistic is vary the height of the strokes and you know, don't make it like a pruned hedge, but try to kind of add variety and um, in your brush strokes. So let's start with this end and I'm going to some of them are going to be a little bit taller and some of them are going to be a little bit lower and I'm keeping in mind that while it's still wet I'll want to come in and maybe dab in, stroke in a little bit of that burnt, or um, excuse me, um, ultramarine blue. And that'll just give the suggestion of some shadows. Now I rinsed it off and I'm gonna grab some more burnt sienna and just do more pure burnt sienna. And I'm using the little tip of the brush to come in down by that line at the bottom. And coming up a little bit, leaving some sky holes, you know, little airy parts. Now I'm going to use this part, the flat part of the top of the brush to come close to that barn roof. You see how I'm doing that? And then come in, there we go. Grab some more blue, maybe a little bit thicker consistency there so it's darker and just dabbing it in. I'm not really stroking too much. All right. Now I'm going to come over on this side. This is a taller tree, big daddy tree, the daddy of them all. And when I drew those um, trees, it was just, just a bunch of squiggles, you know? It's not really any fancy artwork, it's just squiggles. And I came in with the very tip. You can do a whole lot with a one little brush. Okay. 
again, I'm coming in. There's my roof. I don't want to forget to do that and cover the roof up with trees. The brush is not just fully loaded with paint either. It's, it's a little bit less paint in there. I'm gonna have some of the, the hairs on the brush kind of drag as I'm doing that. Come down to the base here. Over here. There's my little roof. Grab some more ultramarine. Just real random dotting it in there, not to... Uh... Think I'll add some more burnt sienna in there. I was going to mention something too. So here at the bottom, there's some lighter areas that kind of it might have been my the oils from my fingertips or something, but it's it's like it's not as dark as this. And I'm not going to even worry about that. If if it really bothered me, I could always crop that off. I don't need it. So don't worry about that kind of stuff. Okay, so. I think uh, I think drying it again is in order, so I'll be right. All right, nice and dry. Um, so now we're going to add the shadow side of the buildings. And I'm going to do the burnt sienna and, of course, our blue. And maybe not quite that dark. Okay, so I've still got this flat brush. And I'm just going to paint carefully around the roof. You can also use your round brush if you feel more comfortable. In fact, I'll probably go down to that on the smaller buildings. And right here, I'm just gonna go right under, just one little thin line under there. Yeah, I think I'll go to my smaller brush. So now I'm going to the sixth round and I'm gonna do the shadow side of this guy. And a little line underneath that roof to suggest the shadow. I'm going to add a little bit of the blue in there. And same thing over here. I left a little bit of a light area to separate it from those background trees, just a little bit. And again, a little bit of a shadow under that roof. Okay. Actually lift up a little bit of that paint. 
kind of let the brush soak it up. It was just a slight bit darker than these guys. I want to try to get them to be the same value. So it looks a little bit more realistic. Okay. I think I'll leave the camera on. This is just such a small area, but I do want to dry it. And then we're going to come in with a little bit darker um, values to suggest the tree, uh, some trees in front of the ones that are already there. I think I'll stick with this brush. So, some more burnt sienna, a little bit deeper um, consistency heavier consistency, creamier consistency, not quite cream, but maybe milky-ish. So I'm gonna come side, hold my brush like this. I'm just kind of suggesting, uh-oh. Oh no, there's a spot in the sky. Let's turn it into a bird. No big deal. tempted to. <laughs> Ooh, that's a little too blue. No problem. Soak it up. Just put more burnt sienna in it. Again, don't forget that little roof. I've covered that up before doing this painting. You can see how adding layers just gives that depth that we're looking for. And leaving some areas that look kind of like the trees have, aren't just this solid massive, massive leaves. And coming up on my side. See how coming in with the darker value too, it, it uh, helps those barns pop forward from the background. All right. I like a little bit more over here too. adding a little thicker paint consi consistency back there. All right. You know something else that's kind of fun to do is, even though it's so far in the background, just doing a little here and there. Suggesting that there's tree trunks. Okay, and I will dry it. I'll be right All right, that is dry. And so now we're going to add some darker accents. I'm still gonna be using that number six brush and just suggest um, the windows. Mixing a little bit of the burnt sienna and the 
ultramarine together in a thicker consistency. This is more, yeah, it's probably still about a coffee, but just a little bit more paint. So there's a window kind of right there. I don't need to fill in all the, you know, like do a whole rectangle or whatever just kind of suggest that it's there because you're looking at this from a distance so it's not like you're seeing every little detail plus something to note is your brain kind of fills in you know when i see a little suggestion of something your brain goes oh that's a window you don't need to you know detail it to death just barely suggest that it's there and then I'm gonna add a little, like underneath here, just a little extra shadow. Here, here, maybe here. Maybe a little bit down here, just to pull that little barn forward a little bit by suggesting the shadow. Just kind of softening that. All right, so I think that is, oops, is there windows on that one? I don't think so. That one's just plain. There's no way in, no way out. So here is the really fun part, and the finishing touches on this are gonna be this tree in the foreground. So that's gonna be the darkest of all the values in this painting, and that's gonna make it feel like that tree is in the very front, right in front of you. So we are gonna mix up the ultramarine, of course, and the burnt sienna, of course, and get a nice big puddle of it. I'm gonna need, you know, a pretty good amount, I guess, of that. And this little number six brush, and I think, again, I think you have one close enough to it. It's got a big, a fine enough point, a tip that comes to a real nice point where you can do the larger parts of the trunk with the belly of the brush and then come up on the tip. And remember we, I showed you the long stroke and the short stroke. So some of this is really going to show you the long stroke. So I'm gonna start at the base here and just come up and I'm gonna move, I'm not moving my hand as much as I'm moving my arm. You can see my hand is pretty steady. And I'm just going to come up like that. And come back here. And suggest this little stumpy part. Now I'm up on the tip of that. And I'm gonna come next to it here and just kind of become one with the tree. <laughs> I'm gonna kind of do little jags where the tree branches bend. And usually where there's a bend, there's another branch that comes out. So we can even do that and then come back here and suggest another little branch. And then keep going. And this takes some practice, it really does. It's not something that comes easily. And I've varied a little bit, like I'm not all doing all that same brown. I'll come back in with a more it's hard to talk and paint at the same time, I'll tell you that. Um, so some of this is, has got a little bit more blue in it. Some of it has a little bit more burnt sienna in it. And I 
it just gives it variety. Helps it look more realistic. And there's no rule on this. You can do as many or as few branches as you want. Don't be afraid to cross over the top of some of them because we know trees do that. They don't stay all tidy in their spot. That might be a little too dark up there, but it's okay. You're getting the idea, right? Back down and do some just scriggly ones in here. Very tippy tip of the brush. And I'm going to come over here and add some. My sleep's getting in my way. And it's important to you know, go over that background so, you know, it looks like it's actually in front of the, you know, some of these little ones, you know, don't just bring them up to the edge of that line and stop. It's good to come up over the top of them sometimes. Just variety, I would say. Just keep that in mind because without variety, you know, what is it? It's dull, it is dull. And you'll note, I'm also not doing like the same, same, same. They're going this way, they're going that way. Some of them are, I don't know why I did that, but I think I'll just continue so it doesn't look weird. There we go. And some of them can be a little bit lighter, maybe a little bit smaller. Don't make them all the same value. And maybe a little grass. Okay. I mean, that's about it. It's not perfect, but you know, it gives you a good idea of, of how to put together a, a landscape painting. I mean, this is pretty basic stuff. So, you know, it's just a good start. So hopefully you're not frustrated and overwhelmed by this, but I'll tell you, just text me any questions that you have or whatever. I'm happy to answer it or, you know, demo some little portion of it if you need me to show you again. I am so happy to do that. So don't, you know, don't hesitate to ask me. Anyway, okay, I am going to put my paints down and maybe I'm going to paint a rock. I have a whole bunch of them I want to show you. So I'm going to move that out of the way. And look at all these rocks that I collected. And I have to tell you, one of my favorite artists on, on uh, Instagram, she posted um, a bunch of rocks that she had painted. And I remember seeing these in neighborhoods around a couple of years ago, but I thought it was such a great idea, you know, why we're all trapped inside to, to do something fun and, you know, creative or whatever. And so I uh, shared, a picture on Facebook and on Instagram of a rock that I had found in my neighborhood. And that was something she said, you know, ha take a picture of what you find and take a picture of what you create and then, you know, put it on, on Instagram and hashtag it or whatever. So I was like, okay. So I, I did that. I took that little picture of the rock and she sends me a private message. And I have to say, she's like one of my idols as far as artists go I guess she's so good I'll show you her stuff sometime um anyway she lives in Arizona but she she tech or she messages me and she said that somebody commented on her post that she shouldn't be um 
touching those rocks because they could have the virus on them and she could find better things to do with her time. And I was like, are you serious? Really? Somebody said that? And, and anyway, so I, I, um, I said, you know, well, it's too bad that people have to squash the joy in everything, you know? So she, she anyway, she said she had deleted the post and blocked the person. And I said, well, you know, I washed my rocks because, but it was more because I was afraid of dog pee and dirt than anything else. So these have been washed, just so you know, they don't have any virus on them. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with them yet. I might paint a little ocean scene or something and flowers or whatever, but it might be something for you to do too when you're getting bored at home. Anyway, that's that. There I am. Bye. See you at Costco. Woot, woot. Hope we have toilet paper. Yay. See you later. <laughs>